broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon to our more local attendees and good morning to those of us joining us from the US today. My name is Josephine Watson, Commercial Project Editor at IGB. We're delighted to be hosting a webinar today where we'll be discussing how to maximize your social casino offering and keep customers engaged. Social Casino lived through its hype a few years ago and has now been implemented by a number of land-based casinos as a way to deliver extra revenue digitally and to keep players engaged when they're not on the property. With the vast majority of US properties currently closed to patrons, digital offerings like Social Casinos have become more important as an extension of the casino brand and as a possible revenue generator. Our panel for today consists of our moderator, Brendan Bussman, Partner, Director of Government Affairs at Global Market Advisors, and our panelists, Michael Carpenter, CEO of Ruby7 Studios, Stephen Navard, Manager of Online Gaming at Foxwoods Resorts Casino, and Rob Picard, VP of Business Development at Rush Street Interactive. I'll allow them to introduce themselves fully shortly once Brendan takes over with the moderation. There'll be a Q&A section following the presentation, so please do submit questions as we go along, and we'll try to address as many of them as possible in the allocated time. Should we not have enough time today, we will endeavour to answer the questions in our post-webinar marketing. With that, I'm going to pass over to Brendan. Josephine, thank you, and appreciate everybody uh, that has joined us uh, this morning or uh, this afternoon, depending on where you're at uh, in the world. Uh, also this evening, as I'm looking at some of the attendees that are here. Um, and uh, excited for um, what uh, I know is a uh, topic that continually uh, is being talked about, especially um, in uh, this uh, post uh, or current uh, COVID area, depending on where we're at in, in our thought process off of this. Um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, three uh, gentlemen that can introduce themselves individually that uh, really give a cross spectrum of the social casino space. Uh, and Michael, I'm going to start with you. Thank you, Brendan. Uh, I'm Michael Carpenter. I'm a CEO of Ruby7. I was a, the founder of, um, of Ruby7 back in 2012. So we're on our ninth year of providing social casinos uh, to some of the largest social or, uh, casino groups in America. Uh, our clients include Tropicana, Pachanga, Mystic Lake, Fantasy Springs, and the Delaware North Gaming Group. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Stephen? I'm Stephen Navard, manager of online gaming at uh, Foxwoods Resort Casino here in Connecticut. I've uh, been at Foxwoods seven years now. Um, about three years ago, I met the legendary Seth Young, uh, who was the director of online gaming at Foxwoods. Um, Partly due to his charm, I changed careers from uh, design and media creation to uh, to online and interactive and fell in love with it as pretty much everybody else has. Um, and I was in charge of everything, including our social casino product, Foxwoods Online. I uh, handled all the user acquisition, in-house and digital marketing, promotions, planning. Um, since I came on board, uh, taking the product to new heights, tripled the user database, tripled the revenue. Um, but uh, as you said, in this in this COVID world here, unfortunately, just found out four days ago, no longer employed by Foxwoods. Um, but I had a great, great run there and uh, look forward to my next adventure. Rob? Thanks, Brendan. Uh, my name is Rob Picard. I'm the vice president um, of Rush Street Interactive. I am heading up uh, commercial negotiations, uh, vendor relations, uh, a lot of our partnerships and new market access deals um, and integral in strategy and execution. Um, at Rush Street Interactive, we uh, own, operate, and develop our own iGaming platform. That platform is utilized for both real money gaming and our social gaming. Uh, we've deployed the social product at all four of our uh, retail casinos, uh, Chicago, uh, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and our newest property in uh, New York and Schenectady. Um, and there's been a great amount of interest. Uh, you have basically utilized the product for our own benefit. Um, and as we branched out into more B2B supply, more managed services, uh, have a lot of tribal relationships and partnerships uh, formulating and where we'll be deploying this, uh, this social product. So it's an exciting topic for, for us. Um, and I look forward to the conversation. Thank you all. And uh, I, I know today will be a great discussion. I think one of the things that 
you know, because I, I, I know from getting some of the uh, attendees uh, that uh, responded to me over the last couple of days uh, that were excited about this. I think one of the things we need to start this conversation with is, is setting sort of the benchmark of what is social casino uh, for those that may be new to the process. And, and we'll do this obviously very quickly because I know there's a lot of people on here that obviously do, but Michael, I'm, I'm gonna kick off with you for, since you're sort of the uh, on the vendor or supplier side of this from your perspective as opposed to the operators uh, that Rob and Steven bring to the mix but sort of lay the land of, of what actually is Social Casino and how has it developed over the course of the last uh, number of years? Yeah, well, most, most people actually don't know that Social Casino actually came from the fact that the original casino games were on social media platforms. Um, so back in 2011, when Slotomania was one of the early entrants, um, all the games were actually you know, mostly played on Facebook and that kind of made Social Casino kind of stick. Um, there actually isn't that much that's social about it, um, but it's really free to play casino where uh, you're given free coins to uh, engage with casino type app or uh, games. And when you run out of coins, um, you purchase new coins and uh, to continue the entertainment. Uh, what most people don't realize is that the, well, actually everybody realizes that the games that are in the casinos um, are entertaining to those players that and patrons that are in the, the land-based casinos and that same entertainment value exists um, in a free-to-play world as well so um, you know that's really what we're we're catering to is is a free-to-play marketplace where uh, you you can purchase coins if you want or you can just simply play for uh, for free every day you know I, I think that's a great you know segue in, into obviously you know over the last 90 days we've seen uh the casino world uh across the globe shut down um and you know in the united states you have roughly about a third of the casinos that are now have reopened since then but let's talk about a little bit about the last 90 days and I, i'm going to go to rob and, and steven on this and, and steven i'm going to talk to you first about this because i told you i'd call you out on it uh when we talked yesterday prepping for this um, but what have you guys seen in the social experience going from, say, February to present day? Yeah, I mean, as, uh, as I said yesterday, you know, I certainly don't want to make light of the fact that, that this was a terrible pandemic, but uh, it's been fantastic for us. Um, since February, revenue has over doubled. Uh, our DAU, daily active users, are up 25 plus percent. Uh, new user registrations have doubled. I mean, it's just, it's, it's ha having a captive audience really helps out, you know, to market the product efficiently and also to get more players in there. Unfortunately, everybody staying home is, is, is really good for the product. And Rob, what have you seen on, on your side of the, of the spectrum? Yeah, I'm going to have to echo Stephen's comments. Uh, I mean, our FTDs are up 84%. Uh, annual paying users, and depositors are up 92%. The conversion rate uh, is what has really, you know, uh, been very impressive. It, it, that's that's up almost 50% just from, uh, you know, from those that are now registering and uh, you know, be, you know, being able to convert those users. It's, um, you know, the, the as as Michael was talking about earlier, um, you, you know the social aspect coming from the the uh, the social platforms in the past. Uh, you know our, our product actually has a little bit more of the the social engagement, similar to our real money casino, where you know there's a, there's the chat room functionality, there's the the sharing through the deep linking to social media sites. So um, I, you know we we've seen a, a an increased hunger, um, and as well we've worked closely with our with our um, partnerships you know at our land-based casinos and at this point in time when when the casinos are closed down um while it's always been a great relationship in in coordinating user acquisition marketing handled by the you know the retail casino side of things and us handling the the retention marketing um you know with nobody in the in the buildings you know there, there was a you know it was uh, an increased interest in in cultivating and continuing to push that so you know for a number of years building and cultivating that database um obviously paid dividends when when online came to pennsylvania in real money format and you know during the shutdown being able to keep your brand present of mind 
um, and targeted and, and keeping, you know, engaged with those players. Um, and as again, as Michael said, that this isn't a form of entertainment. You know, some people like to, to run a movie or listen to Audible um, and others just really enjoy playing these casino games. Um, some for the pre daily allotment of, of virtual currency that they receive and some um, at, at a more aggressive rate. Michael, I'm going to go back to you here real quick because I think obviously we've seen that the, from from what not only you but with Rob and Stephen have talked about uh, of the growth that this has had, and obviously, um, you know, an active and and uh, audience that that is looking for content has has helped do that. How, you know, if you're starting into this um, and you don't necessarily have a social casino product today. Um, what, how does one get started in this and, and how does one, if you're a brick and mortar entity, get into this? And, and obviously I'm going to talk to Stephen and, and, and Rob about their experiences to do it, but what's sort of the foundation that, that we start this process if I'm a casino today and just trying to figure out how, how life works? Yeah, so there, there have been a few casino groups who have tried to kind of build their own um, or through acquisition have, have acquired social casino companies to kind of run their social casino group. Um, those have kind of had mixed results, as, as you might expect. This is a, a very different world from land-based casinos. Um, you know, this is a live online operation um, with automated CRM, user acquisition techniques, and attribution that um, most casino groups have never even thought about. Uh, so it's, you know, it typically requires a partnership with an operator, much like you would do uh, if you were trying to build a sports book uh, as a land-based casino. So the, you know, the fastest way to market and the easiest way to market is, you know, typically through a partnership. Um, you know, Rush Street is one of those examples of a casino company that decided to build their own group, but they've been at that for a long time. They've, they've perfected it, but uh, uh, they've, uh, you know, it, it took a while to get to that point for that casino group. And uh, so there's a variety of B2B providers out there that I think help solve this. And it can actually be solved fairly short term. We, uh, we just took uh, Fantasy Springs Live today and we signed a contract a little over a month ago. So we were able to get them live in the world of social casino in, in a very short amount of time. Stephen, for, from your perspective, and, and obviously, uh, you know, uh, the the foxwoods experience uh brings brings about to the tribal community off of this just as much as anything but talk about sort of the ramp up and the tenure you had and and obviously as i know you mentioned earlier in the interactions at seth and and that he laid the groundwork when he was at that organization as well sure i mean i i would actually echo a bit what what michael said um you know partnering with a with a platform provider as we have with bluebat uh, I think is really the way to go with it. Uh, I mean, I know some of the other, even the other casino in Connecticut, I believe, you know, did their own, has their own platform now. I I don't think it's as easy to to do, uh, to get off the ground. I think it's definitely easier to to get with a with a partner. Um, yeah, Seth, Seth uh, started out with, with Bluebat uh, four years ago and um, it's been, it's been fantastic. You know, we've had a lot of great, Great people over there. Um, they're a subsidiary of, of Green Tube, and um, you know work with with greats like Haig. You know Rob. Uh, uh, shout out to Haig over there. And um, yeah, that, I think that's for surely the way that the way to go is to get with a with a partner, um, and then then you guys are you have a revenue sharing agreement, and uh, you know they they want to work hard too, because when you make money, they make money. Rob, yeah, obviously you guys started from from the ground up. Um, talk to me about that experience because obviously I know that there's a, there's a, there's a number of organizations that have taken that path as well. Yeah, um, I mean the reality is if you've got the time and the money, you can go and build yourself a uh, a i gaming platform. Uh, you know, get into the social gaming space and operate. You know, but the reality is, I mean, that's not really a reality in this day day and age. There's there's Experts uh, and, and and suppliers. Uh, there's been a, you know a lot of people have started you know, build or buy. Um, our, our group, you know, headed by Richard Schwartz and, and Greg Carlin, had the vision early on that they wanted to control their own destiny 
and build an iGaming platform. Um, obviously, with an eye towards the future of real money gaming, um, and you know, given our our you know our footprint in the land-based market, um, the idea was to start with start with social. Um, again, building and cultivating that database. Uh, you know, increasing the engagement with the players and increasing the visitation back to the land-based property. Because first and foremost, you know, we, we you know, under the Rush Street umbrella, um, you know, we, we want to always have that uh, land-based partnership in mind. So, you know, trying to, trying to increase that visitation back to the property has always been a, a major goal of ours. And then, of course, generating revenue. So, um, yeah, building it from the ground up, uh, having a lot of, you know, areas to, to, to learn from, um, and then, obviously, you know, we, we, we entered into New Jersey for Real Money Gaming, and when Pennsylvania came along, the reality is, uh, you know, that, that database cultivated through social gaming has, you know, done wonders for us in, in Pennsylvania. You know, we're seeing, I mean, the reality, we're 40% we're market share uh, in, in slots in, in PA, and, uh, and social is a very heavily, you know, slot utilized business. So um, it has this has taken a long time. Uh, I think the you know as I talked about our, our social products a, a little bit different in the sense that it is built on the same platform for real money. So all the bells and whistles, all of the things that you need for real money, the payment processing, the KYC, the geolocation, you know, some of those things are not necessary when, when you come to the social environment. So it's a bit of a you know we we've got it. We have all the bells and whistles there that are you know, again utilized for real money and you know uh, are able to turn those off or, or, or on and, and, and leverage uh, the development work that we're doing with our in-house engineers uh, for the benefit of both real money and social. You know, I, I think that's, uh, you know, that, that hits the point and gives both obviously perspectives from a startup perspective. Um, I'm going to remind everybody just as a quick side note, we're starting to get some questions in here uh, and we'll get to your questions here very shortly. Um, but I want to make sure we, we highlight some of the topics just so we lay the foundation for this. But if you do have a question, uh, please make sure and enter it over on the side there uh, of your uh, of your screen, uh, and we'll get to those here shortly. Um, you know, Michael, you talked about uh, an organization that just within the last month has gone live um, off of this and, and felt the need to do that. You know, what what's a typical ramp up? uh for somebody that's that's looking to say they're not in the business today they're a casino they're a kino operator they're you know some other form of gaming entity out there that wants to do social what does that look like and how quickly can they can they do that and what options are there from a content perspective so um we we've actually tried to bring our time to market down to be um fast enough to actually react to some of these market changes that we're seeing um that offering for fantasy springs was actually because scientific games was discontinuing their product and so we were trying to hit their um, timeline of going dark and so we were able to execute on that one quite quickly most most of our implementations are between one and four months uh and i think that's pretty consistent i think most most casino groups um b2b suppliers to casino groups are are in the kind of four to six month range um some obviously a little bit longer than that uh regarding the content side of your question uh we have over 200 slots in our world um about 15 kino games 70 variants of video poker uh, live bingo uh, and three variants of blackjack and on that content side the slot games are coming from a variety of land-based manufacturers as well as our in-house studio so we have games from konami from aristocrat from uh, every uh, um, Aruze, um, those are those are some of our big partners, and then we've also got a lot of content from kind of indie studios who kept their social rights, but gave away their land-based and online rights to um, other operators. So, from a, a content perspective, we we try to actually create an experience that's very similar to the land-based casino patron, so that they find games they're used to playing on the on the casino floor. Stephen, Rob, e either one. I'll go to. I'll let either of you take this. From from your perspective and the customers you've seen and in, in the experience you've had, you know, obviously, Rob, you talked about the forty percent with with market share and slots and PA. But you know, what are some of those? Uh, you know, do the games that are on the floor transition into the popular games that people like? What what sort of? And obviously, it's customer specific to market. But what have sort of your experience has been as far as games and popularity? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, you know, like Michael was saying, we 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 too have a a, a wide list of uh, of third party game content. Uh, Every Konami, AGS, Novomatic, Green Two, uh, but we've also you know leveraged our our uh, real money gaming. So we have like the, the Canby Sportsbook that's integrated and they're able to offer you know full full markets on 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 sportsbook through our the social gaming product. Uh, 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 virtual sports, um, evolution, live dealer. So it's a real immersive casino experience um, that, that that mimics that uh, of, of the of the uh, you know online experience. But to your question about what games are popular, you know, uh, again with with Sai Games doing their their IPO and exiting the market and you know locking down the, the content. Um, you know, we we have been you know, adding more and more content. Uh, we also have a online um, real money gaming in in Latin America, where uh, a lot of the European suppliers are entering into that market or haven't gone through the process or have not started to look towards uh, the United States, quite frankly, because of the you know the state by state rollout, the cost and expense of getting licensed and deploying a infrastructure in state. Um, so. The, you know, the because we we're launching a lot of casino content, in, integrating it into our platform. One of the things that we ask of our of our partners and, and being good partners is, hey, you know, we we've, we've got this really cool social uh, product as well. Uh, it's going to get your game some exposure. If you're interested in looking with an eye towards the North American market, you might want to consider this. We we you know we share the data of, of the gameplay um, from our social site with those with those partners. And we've actually seen, um, you know, quite a bit, quite a similarity between the popularity of the games that are being played on social uh, as we launch them into into real money. Um, a lot of these other land-based groups that are digitizing their uh, their games, right, that are on the casino floors, they want to bring those titles online. Um, they're going through that process right now, either integrating onto an RGS, getting those games certified. Uh, but the beauty of of social is it's it's a you know it's not regulated it doesn't have those constraints uh, that uh, that you're imposed with um, trying to go state by state so they can spin up an instance of their RGS in the cloud we can connect to it get that those games deployed in social ahead of those games being available for real money and it gives them a real you know um, uh, some real time feedback on on what real quality database of experienced gamers do and don't like. So it's uh hope that answered your question. <laughs> no, it absolutely did. Steven, do you have anything else you'd like to add in that from your side of the experience? Sure, yeah. Coming from from a land based operator, uh we see a lot of parallels on the gaming floor and uh, in the social casino uh product as well. Uh we have over three hundred games. Uh gonna echo what, what Mike and, and Rob uh said as well. You know, pretty pretty slots heavy, and that's where we find the the majority of our of our players and our whales even are, are playing the slots um but also what michael said in in that these games came from social media from facebook and that sort of thing uh this past year blue bat was able to take a, a very popular game shake it up dice poker and uh, work with the vendor on that to translate that for a social casino product to add a betting element so that we could use that on our platform too so uh yeah, it's very, very interesting, but a lot of parallels to what we see on the land-based side. You know, I think w one of the things that is out there, and, and, and Michael, I'm gonna go to you off of this, um, is, okay, I, I'm, I'm a land-based operator. I wanna get into the social scene. I may end up, you know, as there's been a movement, uh, especially over the last 60 days to look at uh, the, the real money side of this, um, potentially doing full online in, in a lot of states uh, and, and countries around the world. but how do you make that transition to build that database uh, that you have inside from, from a brick and mortar and transition that and start working the online product and marketing to them and then cultivating that relationship? So we, we always are encouraging our, our land-based groups to um, really think about digital and digital marketing as the future. Um, you know, I, I'm one of those guys that believes the post office is not going to be around in five years. Um, but I could argue whether it's 10 or five and it doesn't really matter. We all should be ready for that. Uh, and the idea of sending things, you know, printing them and sending them in the mail, um, it's so entrenched in the casino world. But 
you know, certainly from the world that we live in, we would never think about doing a mailing. Um, that, that'd be an incredible waste of money for us. So the very first thing is to really build up a digital database. Uh, you can do that a variety of, of ways. One is just to simply collect the emails as a starting point. So you have a one-to-one -one communication digitally with your customer. But concierge apps also help build that up. Concierge apps have maybe 20 minutes of engagement a month, uh, but social casinos have more like 600 to 1,000 minutes of engagement a month. So this becomes a really nice brand extension and communication tool for those land-based partners to be able to communicate to their patrons, extend their brand. And then when the time does come for real money gaming, um, much like Rob said, it gives you a nice cultivated database that you can easily target to move to your land-based, or excuse me, your real money product. And um, those are all, always going to be different um, apps because you can't have free to play within a, a, a real money gaming app. But the fact that you have a large audience and, and many of our casino apps are several million installs. So there's, there's a lot of players out there that we've acquired um, that are playing our games that are there for the land-based partner to market to when real money gaming actually is in their marketplace. Steve and Rob, uh, you know, maybe talk about the experiences, obviously, in the markets you've, you, you've launched, Rob, in, in, across several states and Foxwoods, obviously, through, through the partnerships and other things you've had. How has that startup and process been of taking that database and building that from a digital sense? Stephen, we'll go with you first. Sure, yeah. You know, this is a topic I'm really, really interested and really passionate about because what most people don't realize is Social Casino is it's much more than just online gaming. It's it's actually a marketing machine, and um, you have to treat it as such. Yeah, the revenue is great, you know, when when you have an engaged crowd, but but the, it's a marketing machine. Um, I think I think Rob said you, know, you have people playing at home and they're seeing Foxwoods, 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 even if they don't realize that they're seeing Foxwoods, you know. So so they're our our players when you look at when you look at the data um we have a we have a redemption model in the platform so that people can uh, the players can redeem for items on the property bonus slot play uh even some old uh inventory gift inventory um fox was rewards points that sort of thing so we've we've brought back you know 25,000 people a year to the property from the online space to redeem for items, and uh, when you look at at the data of those players, the the iGaming players that we have, they come into the property more than twice as frequently as non iGaming players. And when they come to the property, their ADT is about forty percent higher. So not only is Foxwoods Online, our social casino, creating a better Foxwoods player, but if you look at the demographics of those players, the the higher tier Foxwoods rewards players are actually some of our best players online. So we're creating better players, and the better players of Foxwoods are having fun on our platform too. So uh, you have to leverage all the marketing opportunities available to you uh, on property, off property, digitally. Um, you know, even uh, I, I would say you know that that we have done a few that our database team has done a few physical mailings mike you know which have been have been all right but we you know we have that in place to do so obviously we're you know we're a giant casino um but yeah most of the uh, just keep hitting them with emails and and leverage that database rob how about you yeah i mean i'm gonna uh, Again, echo what Stephen said. I mean, it, it is a it is a marketing machine. That's what that's what it really is all about. He, he, we, you know, Stephen mentioned a few stats, so it's stat time. We're gonna I'm gonna jump in with a few as well. But uh, you know, we found that you know our existing land based players when they register for the social gaming product, their visitation back to the property increases nearly twenty percent. Um, and you know that, that and and that Stephen had touched on as well is like being able to offer promotional incentives online that can be redeemed back at the land-based property is an excellent way to, again, engage with your customers and drive that foot traffic back. You know, that could be anything as simple, you know, from, from 
food and beverage to slot play to you know uh, exciting events that you're that you're having there um you know for, with, with our product we do a lot of personalization and segmentation so if you're living near one of our properties and you you know enter into the social site we're giving you messaging about what might be going on that that day at the property uh, if you live 200 miles away from the property it may be something about you know this weekend's concert or and this is pre-COVID, we'll see what happens in the, in the future with that. But, um, you know, that, that's, that's always been kind of our, our MO to try to, you know, again, be, be very personalized, customized on that. As far as converting them to real money play, and this is, you know, some statistics that we were just looking at, and I was, I was very pleasantly surprised to see that specifically in our Re uh, Rivers Pittsburgh property, which again is one of our social products that we've been cultivating that database, that nearly 15% of our online real money gaming players uh, have come from the Casino for Fun site. So that's that's just validation of the, the database building that we've been speaking of. You know, I, I think one thing um, it, that continues in the in the online discussion, I know obviously we're talking here today about social gaming, which, you know, is definitely, as you guys have, have talked about, uh, a driver not only for visitation, but for revenue. But there's always those stakeholders inside the organization that say, well, we're a brick and mortar facility, why should we go online? Um, what does that bring to the mix? Um, you know, there's also those on, on, the, on the real money side that are the anti-online gamers uh, across the way and across the country. We won't bring up the committee to stop internet gaming uh, in this conversation right now. But Michael, you know, as if you were trying to educate internal stakeholders in an organization that says, why should we work with a guy like you uh, to start an online online presence? Well, what do you tell those people and, and how do you convert them over? Because obviously this is the way things are going. You mentioned it yourself of when's the post office go away, uh, you know, from a mailer standpoint. So, um, you know, the, the message I typically have for our partners is, um, you know, nearly every single market in the U.S. will have online gambling at some point in time. Um, I think this this latest crisis has kind of pushed that even faster than, than most people uh, would have guessed. The fact is, is that most of these land-based casino groups don't have a, a big or a, a good grasp about what it takes to actually operate and run an online entity. Uh, it's a lot harder than it seems. Um, there's a lot of uh, potholes that you will stumble into. Uh, there's a lot of new tools and processes that that most people don't realize. The world that I came out of was video gaming, which um, I really think was uh, absolutely on the cutting edge of really understanding anything and everything about e-com and what the customers were doing. Uh, when I was running Bejeweled for PopCap, you know, we'd spend more time analyzing why somebody bought a 99 cent bucket of coins than I think, uh, you know, Expedia was doing and looking at their customer base at that time. So, um, you know, I, I really do think that there's a learning curve that every marketing group needs to go through. And Social Casino is a great place to, to get that under their belt um, and learn from that as they start thinking about the iGaming world. And when that launches, they're actually a lot more ahead. Um, I think Rush Street's a great example of that. I, I, I absolutely know Richard knows way more than he would have known if he just simply partnered with a, uh, a platform today and then launched iGaming into the, the, the Rush Street property. So, um, you know, the, the easy short message there is digital is coming. It is the future. It will be the future in almost every marketplace. And this is a really easy way for you to get started in that world. Uh, and start learning how to how to participate in it. Stephen, Rob, as, as you've had to educate, why why the heck are we dedicating resources to this, uh, you know, this this uh, new technology and online? What what have been your responses internally that you've had to deal with stakeholders that necessarily have been a problem? I mean, I, I'll I'll take this uh, real quick. I I just refer back to the stats that I just threw out before that uh, not only one thing I want to I want to stress that has been said industry wide is, oh, online gaming, real money or social, it's cannibalistic to the to the property. It's not. It's accurate. All the revenue is accurate. It doesn't 
doesn't take away from what you're doing on property. Uh, and and the stats that I threw out that that our players come back to the property, uh, you know, twice as much, and they their ADT is 40% higher. I mean, it's it's almost a no-brainer. Once you throw out, throw out numbers like that, and you can show that it's actually doing really great as a marketing tool, it's it's much easier. Rob, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, he just hit the nail on the head. Uh, it's complementary and not cannibalistic. Um, we, I don't think there's a better case uh, scenario, case model, uh, than uh, Pennsylvania, where you know we we again ha had the social product in there. Retail sports betting comes along, online sports betting comes along, online iGaming casino comes along. Now, you would think that the pent up, uh, you know, excitement for iGaming might be this case scenario where that would have cannibalized either, you know, uh, retail and or definitely social, right? Why are people going to be playing social casino games when they've got the real thing uh, now uh, online in Pennsylvania? Well, that didn't happen, Every, you know. The, the retail uh, sports book was complimentary, you know, added everything, you know, from slots, table games, food and beverage to the to the uh, land based casino, the uh, iGaming casino it started getting people playing and, uh, you know, I, I call it, well, I've been calling the triple play, right? You've got you've got the, the, the land based casino and sports book, online casino and sports book and social. It's, it's a very complimentary um, way to to hit all of your customers, their interests, their needs at the right time on the right platforms, whether that is uh, at the land-based casino, digitally online for real money, or for their entertainment value um, in, in the social realm. I'll Before just, I'll just add it, if I, if I can. You know, here, here in Connecticut, uh, we don't have anything else yet. There's no legislation for sports betting or real money gaming, so the social is a, is a real no-brainer. That that's an excellent point. Um, before I start getting to some of these questions over here, and I'll remind everybody if you have some additional questions uh, that you'd like to ask, feel free to enter them in on the, on the uh, side of your uh, screen. Um, you know, I know one one thing that I always like to talk about, uh, whether it's on social or real or, or anything else, and it's an issue that comes up in every jurisdiction from a government affairs perspective, which is always the lens I tend to look through, um, is uh, the responsible gaming issue um and and that sort of stuff and 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 it's becoming obviously a much more uh active discussion especially as we've seen sports betting and even online uh become legislated over the last couple of years post paspa um michael i'm i'm going to i'm going to kick off with you is you know what what type of conversations do you have with clients on the rg issue and you know obviously some operators are very proactive in that space and doing those types of things but just sort of maybe want to talk your experience and then obviously we'll, we'll go to Rob and, and Stephen on the operator side. Yeah, so we we're obviously conscious of this and we we pay attention to our players, um, you know, at a very granular level. Uh, and we have several programs in place to slow them down when they they start um, what we consider overspending. Um, the one thing that is a, a regulator in the social casino world is nearly all the transactions are happening over. Um, iTunes or, or the Google Play Store and what that means is that somebody has to go through a, a bit of work to go buy a $99 pack of coins uh, and then it actually takes you some time to to burn those off so you can't you know you, you don't overspend like you could do in the in the real money space um, but we're obviously you know we would much rather have somebody spend four thousand dollars over 12 months than four thousand dollars in an hour um, you know, this is really about a, an entertainment vehicle. We want the long tail of that customer, uh, we're not trying to maximize day revenue and try to get them to spend as much as they can on the first day. Um, in fact, it's the opposite of that for us. So we, we do what we can. There's, you know, there's no uh, responsible gaming requirements that we do. It's more of just doing the right thing for the right reason uh, and trying to treat, you know, our customers like long-term patrons. Stephen, Rob, anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I'll, I'll just say um, we actually do not use the uh, the the app stores, um, and so uh, yeah, our 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 product is available on desktop, you know, mobile, web, um, and the payment processing is done at a 
at, at more standard uh, credit card rates. So we do we have a level of you know from the registration um, and uh, you know very not not as in depth of a KYC process as you would have in, in the real money gaming, but we know who the player is that they're utilizing you know their their credit card or or uh, e wallet in making that that deposit. Uh, again, with the platform being utilized for real money and social, it it has you know all of those aggressive you know, spending limits, deposit limits, time limits, you know, cool off periods, et cetera, that, that obviously aren't aren't tur turned on or necessary as Michael was talking about from the social uh, aspect. But I think as you know, generally as a as a company, um, you know, and, and and most people would want to go above and beyond in, in helping to protect. Uh, those that are susceptible to the to overspending and responsible gaming. Um, you know, there's little things like always setting our our slot games at the very lowest limit. We you know, they're adults. We know if they want to play at a higher stakes that they can go and click the button and add more coins or more multipliers or what have you. We're not trying to trick anyone. We we believe that earning the player's trust is the number one aspect of it. Uh, those responsible gaming features and functionality are present front and center. Uh, we make sure everybody is aware of them and knows how to use them. Um, and because, as, as Michael alluded to, it's not about a quick hit and you know and taking somebody's uh, cash and never seeing them again. It's it's we want this to be a mutually beneficial scenario where they're coming in and really enjoying their time with us, uh, and that money is lasting them. They're get they're experiencing the bonusing. They're playing games at you know the levels of, of you know where, where the art the theoretical rtp is is in play and um uh yeah i'm just again just trying to to uh, earn their earn the players trust at every turn and responsible gaming is, is one of the features that that we make sure we uh we, we call attention to yeah, I, would, Go yeah ahead. I would i would echo pretty much the uh the same thing you know the nice thing is being in a digital platform it's pretty easy to see trends, maybe even more so than on a gaming floor. So, you know, our platform provider, Bluebat, they have tools in place to watch that. And uh, we also have self-exclusion. Ex self so we have had some players, you know, that, that have had to use that feature. You know, they say, hey, you need to, you need to put me on pause for a while and, and we can do that. Um, but I would also agree that it is a, a long-term play. It's not about just getting as much as we can out of, out of the players right out of the gate we we want them to enjoy the product and tell their friends and you know i mean we we've had players that have been with us since day one actually may, many of our whales have been there since day one with this product which really is a testament to the the fun of it so I, i'm going to start getting to, to some of the questions here um and I'll, I'll say there's a lot to deal on the promotional side um, both in, in what you're offering to players, but then also how do you get players onto that? So maybe from each of your perspectives, let's, let's first start with, with the first question, which is, uh, you know, the, the giveaway such as, you know, and I'm going to use the term that somebody used here, the swag, the, the, uh, you know, points, those types of things. Does it also include, uh, like I know with some of our clients, you know, uh, you can translate those into dinners and hotel stays. What sort of, from a from a promotional standpoint, can I win that translates into the brick and mortar? And Rob, I'm going to start with you on this one. Yeah, I mean, it's really anything that you can dream up, right? Uh, you know, we we have the luxury again of of uh, developing the, the the platform and working with our op op operators and marketers to to come up with the the concepts and, and implement those. We're not constrained by by technology, but some, to give some examples, I mean, on the social side, you come in, you know, every day you're going to have a daily free game. At, at which case, you can ch we can change the, the 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 wheel spin to be able to implement. Hey, you know, you win a buffet, win you know X Y Z in in association with our retail partnership and the marketing teams there, or it can just purely be virtual currencies. Um, we every four hours you can come in and and top up your your virtual credits. Um, we have proprietary jackpot scratchers. Again, working hand in hand with our with our land based partners, can put all sorts of of uh, giveaways in that. Uh, we have developed our own custom bingo game, and and this thing has been wildly popular. So as people are just going through and playing, uh, we actually utilize it in real money gaming in, uh, in New Jersey as well. Not yet in Pennsylvania, but on the social side, you, you'll just be interacting with the the site as you normally would, and be invited to play in these 
um, uh, these random uh, bingo games with people, again, from the social side of things, interacting with other players, rooting each other on uh, and winning, you know, prizes. Again, could be virtual currencies, could be something given away at the land-based property. Uh, and then uh, uh, we've built in a number of, you know, 50-50 wheel spins, just a, there's a ton of things. Um, and we're excited to work, you know, either we, we come up with the ideas and share them with our land-based partners and see how they want to participate. And if we want to do any sort of land, you know, promotional around it, um, or they, you know, they can bring ideas to us. So it's a, it's a, symbiotic relationship in uh, between our, the digital side and, the, and our land-based partnerships. Steven? Yeah, so so in-game, uh, similar to what, what Rob said, yet every day you, you can get free coins just by logging in. There's a nice wheel spin. You can get free, free coins or loyalty points, which you can use to redeem for items on property. Um, there, we also have uh, a lot of other ways to to earn free coins by inviting your Facebook friends back to that social component. Um, you can also watch where something's really been been very popular. We have uh, promotional videos on there. So videos about upcoming shows at Foxwoods or some of the different uh, attractions that we have, like the Monza karting or the zip line. Uh, so we have promotional videos for those and it's a watch and earn uh, sort of a thing. You watch the whole video and you get X amount of coins. So plenty of ways to earn free coins. And then once you want to redeem, there's a, a whole a whole reward center full of, of items, all, uh, whether those are physical gifts, uh, t-shirts, uh, mugs, uh, Foxwood swag, um, or things you can game with, bonus slot play, uh, re rewards points that you can use in any one of the restaurants. Uh, there's there's a lot of a lot of nice digital offerings there, and that's using our our partners on on property and our tenants to uh, to get as as many opportunities for rewards as possible on there. Michael, any anything you'd like to add on the on the promotional side of things? Um, no, I, th I think maybe the the a couple of things that we do a, a little differently than than Robin and, and Stephen mentioned was um, we actually allow for the casino partners to actually create VIP tiers where we can put a, a high value player right into the social casino VIP tier that matches up with their land base. Um, and their welcome bonus can be a lot more than a typical player welcome bonus. So we've, we've done quite a bit of work there. And then with, um, with Pachanga, with Best Bet Casino, we actually have a digital loyalty mall so when you purchase um, coins in the in the store, uh, you get a rebate, and you can use that rebate to actually um, redeem for hotel rooms or buffets or, or gift cards within the the casino itself. Um, and that's all done with within the social casino app, so you can actually redeem right there in the app. Uh, so those are the the two things that are different. We we obviously do the rest of that as well, where. Um, you know, we have daily bonuses and hourly bonuses and things like that for for coins. You, you know, one thing, and this goes to the other side of the of the promotion question, not just what you're what you're getting off of it, but getting people in. Um, and it goes to the engagement issue, which we've got a few questions off of. How, and obviously, in the current time, it's been a, a different world because you have a captive audience. Um, but how do you keep your customers engaged in this process and continually coming back as well as taking somebody that may be, you know, a first time slot player at, at uh, uh, Rivers Philadelphia or, or Foxwoods or anywhere else where I come in and be like, hey, I can go play this online. What, what types of things are you doing on that front? And Rob, I'll, I'll kick it off with you if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, again, working hand in hand with our retail uh, properties, you know, we, there, there's going to be signage on there uh within the within the property uh cross promoting the 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 social component of it uh it once we get them either either registered or they're part of the rush rewards program we can you know target and direct directly do email campaigns um you know uh, have them register for the social product uh at which point in time we have you know all, all of the tools that we can leverage and utilize the, the the push messaging email direct mailers in conjunction with the with the properties themselves and and, and moreover we kind of come up with um uh you know and, th and thanks to some of our our guys you know locally at the, at the properties uh, that have also transitioned over into the 
Brook Street Interactive side, is, you know, having worked hand in hand with the product uh, on property um, and and helping say, hey, you know, like th these, let's put together a, a, a essentially a playbook because as Michael talked about earlier, you know, the, the coming from the the land based space into the digital world is 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 quite different, uh, and we try to ease that transition as uh, as easily as possible. And so we've taken you know our our real life experiences and they're doing exactly what what you're asking how, how do exactly do we do all this how are you going to help us do all of this and and put it into a playbook and said hey here's the blueprint that has worked for us uh let's see if it will work for you or customize it for how you like to operate um and that's kind of the starting point here it's like these are the things that we're doing and this is the successes that we've had uh and so for the partnerships that are you know looking for a product that are coming to us and say Hey, you know, would you supply uh, your product for us and help help us build and cultivate the database and increase the visit visitation and generate revenues? Um, and the answer to that is, you know, we're, we're looking for those strategic partners. Um, we're, we're not ultimately just a pure B two B supplier that is going to blanket the country and offer this up, you know, uh, all, to everyone. It's just kind of a, a you know a, a selective and strategically selective. Uh, uh, the process for us um but yeah i think i think we, we've set the roadmap and uh we think it could be leveraged and utilized by by a, a lot of other people as well steven michael sure anything you'd like uh, to add yeah coming coming from land base land base side uh getting players in there there's signage all over the property um utilizing every every available channel whether that's push notifications through the concierge app um, or emails through the database marketing team, or even some physical mailers uh, and signage at the rewards booths. Uh, it's really edu educating. Educating the property is the key to this, so that people can talk about it. You know, you want your employees being able to talk about it to the patrons um, and and explain what it is and how much fun it is. And and one other interesting point is that we use sometimes in our marketing materials is that you can learn how to play these casino games in a no risk environment uh in a in a social casino environment you know where there's free coins to play so if you don't know how to play uh, blackjack or roulette or you know any of the asian table games we we have them all there and you can try them out and learn the rules and then bring that to the casino too so we use that angle a lot as well michael so we um I, I I would just say I I agree with both what Stephen and Rob said on this. I I've got nothing else to add. Okay. Um. I I know we're starting to run short on time, and we have a number of questions here that that I know are very quality questions. And as uh, we opened up uh, today's um, session, uh, we will get to some of these in the post uh, Q and A that we send out uh, through iGaming Business. Um. But uh, there there's one I want to make sure we highlight. Um, real quick, other than, than Rob, I do have a specific question for you that was asked by one member of the audience. Uh, they want to know if you'll take the guitar off the wall and play some tunes for <laughs> us uh, along the way. Play some what? Play some tunes. Just oh, pick okay. up something and do it. Do it. Do uh, do whatever uh, melody you want along the way. Yeah. But um, you know, obviously, we've talked a lot about Young, social. And, what? That's Seth Young. Um, I won't mention any names. So. Um, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that he he also that individual also asked us uh, for the rest of us to start singing along. So uh, we'll spare the audience. Yeah, um, but, uh, you know, obviously we've talked a lot about social and social will be a driver off of that. And especially, I think, personally, in in some of those uh, border casinos where you've got to cross a, multiple states, um, especially in that northeast corridor. Uh, where you've got to do this. But, you know, I think one of the things that, that I want to make sure we ask real quick and just quick commentary on all of you, social's leading the way on this. How does this transition over the next five years, say, to to real money play where you're having both in tandem? Um, and Michael, I'm going to start with you because I know Rob's experiencing it uh, right now from his perspective. So we do um, all of the external user acquisition for the social casino for all of our casino partners. And that experience right there and, and having the, the casino partners see the techniques that we use for Facebook and Apple search ads and AdWords and the network buys, 
that experience right there and seeing how attribution works and seeing how you actually acquire players in a digital environment is incredibly valuable for the, the casino groups when they start thinking about iGaming and running the marketing for an online platform. So that, that's probably the biggest, biggest one right there. Steven? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll echo what, what Mike said. Um, it's, you know, we don't, we don't have the, the legislation, like I said, for sports betting or real money gaming. Obviously, we've thought about what this landscape would look like once that comes online what it would do to to our social product and we we believe that there will be some crossover between uh players that want to play for real money and and the social but we we do believe that the social gaming will still be very very strong they're different they're a little bit different clients you know not everybody that's playing socially wants to play for real money and not everybody that wants to play for real money wants to play socially so um you know we're going to have to leverage all our UA channels uh, to get new customers for the the real money gaming once that comes online, uh, but also, of course, market pretty heavily to our uh, to our existing social social uh, casino players to see if they if they want to play for real money. Rob, well, I think what the future is going to see is there, there's there's a a lot of casinos out there across this great country and uh, how many of them are you know they, they want to participate in this in this online gaming boom um are they going to you know spend the tens of hundreds of millions of dollars with their you know b2c on their own brand license a third-party product for real money i gaming you know and, and and make a go of it like the the larger brands are, are doing or are they going to partner with um uh you know with, with a with a with an, an existing operator so the way I, I see this playing out is they can participate in the process by uh you know getting a social casino going cultivating that building uh, that that database um monetizing that as well um and then a lot of times when a, a state is going to legalize and, and regulate um there's partnerships and market access opportunities that are happening with companies like ourselves as well and if the if the social platform's already in uh, they're utilizing it. They're having a wonderful experience. Uh, yeah, the, the the business relationship with the RSI um, is is extremely strong. We feel that we're in an excellent position to help um, launch uh, iGaming in you know whether that's sportsbook only or if iGaming Casino comes to that market. Um, we we hope to be the, you know their partner of choice and you know work with them on a revenue share basis uh, for the mo for the revenues that we're generating online in real money. And they're earning money uh, utilizing the same plat platform for, for social. Uh, and then we go back to that triple play experience that I talked about, converging land based uh, with online real money and, and online social. And uh, you have the whole package. Very good. Well, thank you all for your, your participation today. Um, and thank you most to the audience uh, that uh, had some great questions. And hopefully uh, you found this uh, educational and informative. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Josephine. Thanks so much, Brendan, and thanks to the entire panel for a really hearty discussion, some really interesting points raised today. And Rob, maybe next time we'll get you on that guitar. We'll uh, plan it into the schedule. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, like, like Brendan said earlier, we'll try and address as many of those questions as possible in some post-webinar marketing. But otherwise, today's webinar has been recorded and will be available to listen to on demand shortly on iGamingBusiness.com. And you can re-watch it and share with your colleagues as always. Otherwise, I hope everyone's keeping safe and healthy and we'll see you all soon. Bye, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Thanks Michael. Thank you. Thank you all. Enjoyed it. Thanks for having us.